Okay, so here we're going to be talking about four point probes. So, four point probes are a way of getting around the problem of contact resistance. So, contact resistance is a common problem in resistance measurements. So, we'll just demonstrate that with this old piece of uh, copper or brass that's a little bit tarnished, so it's got quite a poor surface quality for measuring the resistance. So if we take our multimeter and try and measure the resistance, so we just contact here, then see we're getting it's jumping about quite a lot, but between less than a mega ohm and a few mega ohms. Now if I press these down really quite hard, so this goes off the scale, so I've now got to change the scale down and then if I press down you can see this is going below an ohm. So depending on how hard I press down these probes, the resistance that we measure varies by a factor of over a million. So you can see that this is a massive problem for knowing what the actual resistance of this piece of copper is. Right, so I've got this contact resistance that we get between between our probe and our piece of metal and it's not reproducible in the magnitude of that resistance. So what this multimeter is doing is, so if this is the surface of the copper, then it has some resistance that we want to measure. So let's call that RS, the resistance of the sample. So all the voltmeter is doing is uh, supplying a voltage and measuring a current. But between the metal, the cop copper metal and the probe, there is some contact resistance. So we we'll represent that with a resistor on each probe. So we'll call this RC1, call this RC2, so contact resistance 1 and 2. So because this is very unreproducible, uh, these contact resistances are basically unknown. We don't know what they are. Now the multimeter is measuring the resistance of all of these. It's measuring the two contact resistances and the sample resistance, which is what we want to know. So if we don't know these resistances, we don't know the sample resistance. So how can we overcome that? Well, we can use something called a four-point probe where we're going to separate the voltage and current part of this measurement. So if we imagine taking our sample again, our piece of copper, and we're going to have two outer probes. So again, each of these has a contact resistance, and we're going to source a current through these two outer probes. Then we're going to have two inner probes. Again, each of these has a contact resistance and we're going to measure the voltage over these two inner probes. So we've got these four contact resistances, call this RC1, C2, RC3, C4, and then we've got three sample resistances. S1, S2, S3. 
3. So if these are all evenly spaced, then these sample resistances should all be the same. So what happens now if we separate the current and the voltage measurement? So we're going to supply a current. So some known current is going to flow through this probe. There'll be some voltage drop over this contact resistance. We don't know what that is. Again, there'll be some voltage drop over this resistor. Right? So we only get a voltage drop when we have current flow and some resistance. Then again, we're going to get another voltage drop. But the difference here is that this voltmeter has a very high resistance, very high input impedance. So an ideal voltmeter has an infinite input impedance. An ideal voltmeter has some real input impedance, but usually this is very, very high. So it's usually much higher than any of these resistances. So you can, we can effectively say that there's no current flow through these contact resistances. So we don't get any voltage drop over here. The only voltage drop we get is over this resistor because it's it's much smaller than this one. There's only current flowing in this direction. So this voltmeter only measures the voltage drop over this sample resistor. So it's telling us what the voltage drop is here. Um, again, we get another voltage drop, but that doesn't matter because we're not measuring it. And of course, if we know what the current is flowing through here, we know what the current is flowing through here. So from the knowledge of this current and this voltage, we can measure this resistance.